Now, as much as we love having neighbours in our marina, hi, by the way, um, one thing that I'm sure everybody likes is their own privacy. So that's what I'm going to do this week, show you how I fitted some privacy window film. And I hated doing the first one after watching other people's YouTube videos, so I'm going to show you my way how I got on with it. So keep on watching. Firstly, if you've got OCD, you probably wouldn't enjoy doing this at all, which is why I'm going to show you where I thought I went wrong and then I'll talk about my method. So here's the double glazed windows on our narrowboat. But before you start attempting this, you do need to make sure that your glass is thoroughly clean and grease free. I'll spare showing you that tedious job. Gently scrape off any paint splashes or specks with a vinyl smoother. You could use a scraper. Oh, and if you see any silicon smeared along the edges, it's a good idea to remove those as well. Otherwise, it'll stop the film from sticking to the glass. Now, assuming you've done all of that, it's time to roll out the film on a clean surface. Then I went to my window to take measurements of the size that I needed. And this is where many YouTube videos vary. Some say to leave a two centimetre allowance all the way around so you can trim it off later. Some say to get the height right and only leave the allowance on the left and the right. And you'll notice that our windows aren't that big, which also meant we'd be left with a lot of waste. So for my first attempt, I decided not to worry about trimming any of the allowance off the bottom and only give two centimetre allowance on the left, right and the top. And I'll talk about why I thought that was a mistake in a minute. And you'll also notice with it being a shiny reflective mirror, it's very hard to see any pencil marks if you are marking out. So a bit of masking tape sorted that out so I could see my pencil lines. As for a straight edge, luckily we had a long mirror. I don't think spirit levels, which I usually use, have a place on an narrowboat. And use my favourite 199 B&M wallpaper scissors. These are so sharp. But if you've got a rotary cutter, a straight edge and a cutting mat, and you're very careful, I think that would give an even straighter cut. Next, it was time to get the window ready. And I did this by spraying some washing up liquid solution to make it nice and slippy. But with it being a hot day, I'd also find by the time I was ready to put the film on, the window had dried. So I'd have to keep reapplying it. I suppose that's what you get being in a hot tin. And as thin and as light as the film felt, it does have a backing that you've got to peel off, or at least mine does. Yours might be different. And initially I'd create some masking tape tabs to pull away carefully. But later I didn't really think this was absolutely essential as long as your hands were very clean. And I'd pull part of it away and spray the bit that I'd exposed. Take it to the window and line it up. And spray and pull as I went. No. Nope. Didn't like that method. The sheer weight of it, it just kept slipping down. So I ended up having to take it back to the table, pull the backing off completely, spray it all, make sure the window's wet again, and then put it back. Although lining it up partially to get started and make sure it's straight with a taller window might be better, but definitely not these smaller ones. Initially, I started smoothing it with my rubber tipped Karcher window cleaner, without the power, of course. Oh, I don't like this at all. And then I'd move to my vinyl smoother, which is sharper. That's better. So I really should have been spraying it with more water so it would glide easier. This was actually my favourite tool to use. The other thing about leaving a lot of allowance at the bottom, it just didn't feel a manageable size. So this is where I quickly trimmed as much of the bottom off as I could. And although I didn't have a great deal left anymore, and even more continuous smoothing over, this is where it felt I was going to be here all day and it was gonna drive me crazy, especially having an allowance at the top because the moisture just naturally wanted to run down. So yeah, whatever you do would not have an allowance at all on the top. The other thing that I found was even leaving an allowance around created an overlap around the beading, which then created an air gap. So even though moisture would come out, air would go back in and I'd get large bubbles on the corner I don't like this job. And after about 20 minutes of smoothing over the smaller bubbles with a credit card, I'd then hold it along the edge 
and score the excess off with a sharp Stanley craft knife. But pulling the excess off, you've got to be so careful because if you haven't scored it properly, you can accidentally tear it, which I did a tiny bit on my first one at the top. And these are the things that are going to be noticeable from the outside. And even with a fresh Stanley knife, it wasn't that easy to get an absolutely pristine cut. So generally, no, I wasn't that happy with my first attempt and we were almost tempted to take it off. But we are going to fit some perfect fit blinds which slot into the internal beading. So it will cover all of that. So yeah, that's why I left it. And I nearly didn't even bother with the rest of them until I thought, actually, I have an idea. Take the exact measurements of the visible window pane. And yes, it means no allowance. There's no safety net. But by triple checking the measurements, I found this a lot less stressful and quicker. The only sacrifice that I have made though, and I'm absolutely happy with it, is the odd millimetre of glass not being covered around because if you measure whatever is there all the way around, it's not exact. And this was just a much more fun way to do it. And after finishing all of them, here's the final look. I will leave a link below to the ones that I've installed because there are many types. And these are mirrored on the inside during the day and anyone walking past on the towpath can't see in. But at night, they do work in the reverse, meaning it's mirrored on the inside and you can see straight through at night. 